Hey, what's up, Moto Buddies? Mike here from Taco Moto Co. Baja Taco Tours. Today, out testing. This is the Shop 21 350 EXCF. We're doing some map testing, map tuning, and product development of a, on a new ECU product out of Italy. This is called the Taipan uh, by AIM, AIM Sportline. Now, AIM is a company that has been in racing development, electronics, they do data acquisition systems. They do Formula One steering wheels. These guys are uh, very well known in automotive circles. It's a company that's been around a long time. And these are not, this is not a new startup company. AIM is, is absolutely an industry standard company in very high end automotive electronics, very widely known. What's new and what's going to be new to you and to me as well when we first learned about these is that they have just entered uh, the, the dirt bike market. So one of their product engineers who is very passionate about dirt bikes and um, late model KTM bikes decided that the company would invest the resources necessary to develop a ground up ECU product uh, as a replacement, a direct plug and play replacement for the Kahine 33 pin ECU, which is on the KTM bikes that's on the 16 plus motocross and the 17 plus enduro bikes, four strokes. So any of those machines take that, that footprint ECU. And that includes all of the KTM products, Gas Gas, Husqvarna. Uh, this fitment also is in Honda bikes, Suzuki, and the Yamaha, however, the Yamaha take a, a different chipset. There's just a little bit of a wiggle with the Yamaha, but it's the same basic footprint device. And so we have been developing this as a, 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 an option to give guys more in the mid price point. So this is 650 bucks for the ECU itself and then when you add in the map switch that takes it to 750 those are projected retail prices right now filming this in december of 2021 with a global chip shortage with global price hikes on all sorts of electronic items as well as other things this is current level pricing if you watch this in the future and it's changed it's just the result of those factors and variables what this is designed to do is to displace really the, uh, the the position that the Vortex ECU holds in the market. And they're coming at it hard and they're charging at it with technology, uh, features and options. And they're doing a very impressive job. I'm, I'm blown away at this little box. So for 650 bucks, um, you've got a device that is uh, head to head with that device. Uh, so it's less than the comparable Vortex ECU. It also, for another 100 bucks, you add this multi-mode function switch. And so this is really the magic of the system. And so what it allows you to do is have five maps. So over here on this side, you see the numbers one through five. That's your maps. Down here, when this light is on, when it's red, this tells you that you're in the map option. And then you toggle through one through five. You just toggle whichever map you want to you want to select into. Once you've selected into a map, then you can pre-select any one, uh, mode one through five level of traction control for that map. You can program launch control, and then you can program three levels of fuel trims for that specific map. So let me break it down like this. Let's say map one, I wanted to have no traction control and no launch. Let's just erase map, right? I don't want anything on there. I just want it wide open. And so um, that's how I'd configure map one. Map two, let's say I want to have traction control to level three and uh, no launch control and fuel trims normal. Map three, I want to have traction control five, maybe turn launch control off. And maybe I'm running, I've been doing some experimenting with uh, some sand dune riding and I like, uh, let's say a particular muffler, the, the oh, how about a FMF 4.1? And so that's a, maybe a little more fuel hungry. And so I can go into the fuel trims, low, medium, and high. And from the switch here, I can, I can punch those up. On the Vortex ECU, you have to gain access to the ECU itself. And then with the screwdriver, you can make those fuel trim adjustments. Um, but those stay locked in. And if you change to a different map, 
then you, you want to readjust those. So this allows the user to have different configurations preloaded in at the different map settings. And so you can just hit your map button here and then jump around to whatever particular setup you have uh, in mind for those conditions, that setup on your bike, whatever. This is not, so let's talk about the GET. The GET um, is, is obviously a replacement ECU and is a competitor against this, but it's at a much different price point. So that that's considerably more expensive. And uh, then the reason there is, is because it's a, it's a faster ECU. It has a barometric pressure sensor. It has a, uh, so I've been testing out the traction control on this and the traction control on the, on the GET is better. Uh, it has a 10 mode selector dial and the algorithm is an improvement over this. So this is better than the Vortex traction control, which is, is just a toggle on or off. Well, this gives you five levels of traction control. And so this is a step up from the Vortex, but not quite up to the, the level of refinement, feel, and control of the GET. But it is impressive how well it works. And it doesn't have the Wi-Fi capabilities, the remote access, uh, troubleshooting. Uh, so there's it, uh, Barrow sensor, I think I mentioned that. So there's a handful of things that it doesn't have and it, and it doesn't really compete head to head against with the GET. And I don't think it's trying to. I spent some time on the phone with Robbie over there at the USA office and I'm really impressed with how they're positioning this, what they're doing with it, and, and, and the market they want to carve out and achieve with this. And I think that for uh, the direction they're heading with this, I think they're bang on. They have launch control as an option. There is a, a very feature-rich suite of data acquisition with a dongle that you can add onto this. And so you can run your heat, you can run your race, you could just do your riding and then you can download that data and look at it after the fact to look at bike performance parameters and areas that if you're with a race team or if you're a very skilled amateur rider and you wanna you know, make some tuning adjustments or even some, this will tell you what throttle positions you're at, what RPMs, which gear, this will let you know how well you're doing on the track and areas that you and your coach, our teammates can, can improve on. So it's a hell of a deal. I'm super stoked by it we are right now working on developing a set of takomoto maps one of the things that has set us uh, set us apart and differentiated us uh, in the market of ecus and tuning is how much development time and refinement we put into the hardware platform so this is nothing more than a little computer and just like your smartphone that's just a device it's really the apps the, and and what you do how those are configured the setup um, differentiates uh, one phone from another um, and the usability of it. So it's really about the map set and Takamoto is right now, we're just launching. We just, we're just beginning this journey with this ECU. And so uh, another thing I think that's exciting about this is in talking to AIM USA, how forward looking they have been with the design of the, the CPU here presupposing chips, IC chip shortages on the global market. And so they've, in a way, future-proofed the, the, the manufacturing of this against it. They've backstopped it as best as they can. Now, no one can completely. And so right now, we're in the midst of some GET ECU limitations with availability. Uh, that is freeing up, and so there's been, there's some good news there. If, if, again, if you're watching this right now, this is a snapshot in time. And there have been some availability pressures and issues with the Getty CUs, and that seems to be breaking happily. Uh, Vortex is just going into a dark mode uh, where they have had very limited production. production. Uh, availability has been very limited and will continue to be on the decline in the future. I would love in the comments if anybody has any better updated information on that, but all the indications and all the people in the industry um, that are in the know are projecting that future for that device and as far as uh, the AIM ECU here uh, very good stock very good availability and very good supply so and here you can see the get uh, somebody was um, I was talking to this about the other day and they wanted to know what the size comparison is and so really equal uh, the get ECU 
uses a form factor switch that is very similar to the Vortex, which is very similar in, uh, to this. And so all three of them are about the same size map switch. If you run this on like a XCFW or uh, an FES bike, and it comes with the two map and the single mode traction control switch, the stock OEM map switch, this is a uh, this ECU is a direct plug and play replacement of that. So if you didn't want to access the high level features that you get with their OE, with their um, proprietary map switch, and you just wanted two map toggle and traction one mode on off, then you could just plug the ECU in and then it will control and talk to the stock map switch. But if you wanted to replace it and gain extra features and usability, you just swap it out. You just take off your stock switch, put that on and gain access to all that. They also have a uh, race level software utility program like they all do, like Athena has Maya and then uh, the Vortex has their race level, tuner level, shop level software. You can do the same thing here. And so if you wanted to do very high level tuning and adjusting, uh, you could do that if you were a professional tuner or a very skilled uh, shop, et cetera, you could, you could gain access to that as well. So incredibly excited for this new device look for this on the taco shop very soon we're gonna we're gonna work aggressively to finalize our suite of taco moto maps for this we're we're going to launch this out with applications for all of the 17 plus enduro bikes of all sizes and all of the 21 gas gas models of all sizes um, we have a honda crf 450 l x rl version for the 19 plus bikes that we're also going to launch and begin the testing. I've got my test Honda bike at home with this setup on it right now that, that I first want to finish out this KTM stuff and then we'll launch over and begin on the Honda bikes. And uh, again, this is, this is a Vortex fighter. I, I really like the Vortex and for years um, we've, we've, we've enjoyed it. We've sold it. We've used it. Uh, this has just drawn a big bullseye right on its back and it's coming for it hard. And I think that's good in that um, I appreciate being pushed. I appreciate technology that puts pressure on other technology. I appreciate our business. I appreciate Takamoto when we, when we screw stuff up or when something is deficient, I appreciate having that brought to our attention and then working hard to resolve that uh, as, a, as a business. I want us to continually to improve and get better um, and refine what we're doing and how we're doing it. And I think that when a new product like this comes out and puts pressure on an older gen device, I see that as a good thing uh, that can push uh, other manufacturers, other products, other businesses. You see where I'm going with this on a personal level. These things can cause us to grow, to look at the deficiencies of where we're at and where we should be headed. And so I see all of this as a win. I'm, again, I'm, I'm super excited about the future of this little pink box colors great at first i thought it was a little weird but you got a yellow box uh for the gets green this is pink whatever bring it all these strange colors i like it motorcycling is fun these are toys these are toys to be played with go have fun on your bikes go out and get some adventure thanks for watching like and subscribe